This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Kindness. We see it all around us. We see it when someone pays for someone else's coffee or holds the door open for another person. We see it in the smallest of gestures, like a smile or a kind word. But it's different when we turn on the news or social media. Oftentimes, what we hear about, what outlets are pushing, is the opposite of kind. Welcome to the Kindness Matters Podcast. Our goal is to give you a place to relax, to revel in stories of people who have received or given kindness, a place to inspire and motivate each and every one of us to practice kindness every day. Hello and welcome. You are listening to the Kindness Matters Podcast And my name is Mike Rathbun, and I am your host for this show, and every show, really. (laughs) Wow. Okay, Uh, as you may have noticed at the beginning there, we are a proud member of the Deluxe Edition Network, a collection of the finest podcasts out there in the world, and they have a podcast of the month right now, always, every month. And then podcast of the month for September at the Deluxe Edition Network is Berks County Unsolved. If you are a fan of true crime, you are going to love Berks County Unsolved. It's a podcast from Casey Shearer of the Deluxe Edition with Casey and Ray, and also Mike D. from the Take on the World podcast. And it's focused on the unsolved murders in Berks County, Pennsylvania, and its surrounding areas. Give it a try. Give it a listen. You're going to think it's amazing as well. Also, make sure to check out the show notes where you will find links and discount codes for two companies that I have partnered with. Sunday Scaries, a company that makes broad-spectrum CBD gummies, and Coffee Bros that make an amazing blend of coffees, and they also sell coffee-related products. I use both of these and they are nothing short of amazing. And now, let's get into that show. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I am so excited. Let me tell you about my guest today. Uh, she is an international business business plus human design coach, certified NLP practitioner, sales expert, author, and speaker for visionary entrepreneurs who want to make more money and reduce stress and overwhelm. She is originally from Germany, but now resides near London, UK, where she helps business owners globally scale their service-based businesses to six and seven figures sustainably. She challenges traditional entrepreneurship norms, advocating for business success aligned with personal fulfillment Using human disease, oh my God, human design, not disease, design, NLP, and strategic business practices. I spit, welcome to the show, Adina Kroll. Thank you so much. I read over that thing like five times. It's a script, basically. I should be able to read a script. Honestly, don't worry (sighs) about it. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh god human disease yeah welcome to the show adina thank, thank you so you much for much. being here i so appreciate your time um so t- talk to me now i'm somewhat new to the to the term human design coach or human design what what is that I'm glad you asked. I can talk about it for days. <laughs> I'm going to take a break. <laughs> you just go on. No, I'm I'll, just, I'll just I'll just talk about it. Human design is a modality or a self discovery tool that essentially uses that that consists of several different spiritual modalities such as astrology, the Kabbalah, the I Ching, the chakra system, etc. Oh wow! Quantum physics. And in a nutshell, that all sounds a lot more complicated than what it actually is. But in a nutshell, the best way that I can describe it is 
it's a tool that helps us understand how we as human beings are designed, best designed, uniquely designed to make decisions and know what is correct for us because we all understand that we all have a very different biological DNA. We understand that even identical twins have like the slightest difference. Yep. Right? What we don't understand as human beings, or rather we understand it, but we haven't really accepted it socially yet, is that we also have a unique, like a unique energetic DNA. And what that means is that as a society, we love rules and regulations, which I can, human design has a rule for this. So there's a reason why that's there, but I'm not going to go into that today. But Fair enough. we love, we love rules and regulations because we need them to know what, right. is correct, what isn't correct. Right. So how do we know what's normal? It's like, okay, well, if a majority does something, then that's normal. The problem is we now live in a, in an era where most of us, not the whole world, first world countries have the ability and the abundance to go way beyond just surviving. And so we are looking at how do we thrive? What makes us fulfilled as human beings? And what we're learning is that from a very young age, that we should trust what appointed authority figures say a lot more about our fulfillment than what we believe is to be true, right? Our parents, teachers, bosses, governments, etc. Doesn't mean they're wrong, right? There is right. some merit to some expertise. But just because something makes logical sense doesn't mean it's the most fulfilling choice for us. Hmm. Interesting. And that's what human design teaches us. How do we okay. work as like how do I or you work as a human being? I, I am someone who might, like, I might love to be busy or I might love to be alone a lot more. Then that doesn't make you wrong or incorrect for being right. a social butterfly, right? So that's kind of like the thing. And how do we navigate this? And there's, it's a huge high level of what I'm going here. But I'm like, does that make sense when I say that? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, it absolutely does. That's... That's kind of, Now, did you say this is something that's new or that we're just discovering or... It's not new. It's become a little bit more mainstream in the most recent years. I'm pretty sure it's been developed in the 1970s, but please don't quote me on that. I've never been good at the history of things. (laughs) I studied this for so long at this point, and I still don't know the exact date when it was quote unquote invented. But uh, it's it's been around for a while, but with any system, because it's, it's the only system that I see that shows and teaches how do I know I'm making a correct decision for myself? How do I live according to the most fulfilling and easeful life for my design is what we would call it based on my energetics. Um, it took a while to catch on because people are like, well, no, that's not what science says. And that's like, we, we can't measure fulfillment. We can't measure happiness because that's an individual thing. And because it can't be right. like, what makes me happy versus what makes you happy. Like you can't really study that. It's a feeling, right? It's like, show me how much you like someone or tell me like, how do you measure how much someone likes or loves something? Like it's impossible to say. So it took a while to catch on, but it's become a lot more mainstream in the most recent years. Wow. That's, that's incredible because basically, okay. So now what you do is you take that human design along with some other Um, modalities and you coach people to be the best version of themselves is that yeah Yeah. to to reach their highest potential and empower themselves and essentially eradicate the guilt and shame around their own version of success because that white picket fence the 2.47 kids and the the dog and the whatever Sure, that's great for some people, but not for everyone. Sure, no, not everybody desires that or or finds that fulfilling. Although I have always wanted to meet that 0.47 kid. I, I know, don't you love statistics when they do that? <laughs> <laughs> Dear me, that child is missing a lot. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I yeah, that's 
that's neither here nor there. But it, it's been around for a while. You know, the average the average person has two point four seven kids. Well, where's that point? What's that half a percentage point of kids? Math. <laughs> that's the half math. <laughs> and this is why I did not like math. Um, <laughs> Which is a whole other story. Um, so now how he, 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 he's all over the place, ladies and gentlemen. So you, your coaching is geared toward just entrepreneurs or no? It's mainly geared towards entrepreneurs and business owners for sure. Doesn't mean it's not helpful for other people, but I'm marketing towards them for the bigger message right? Visionary entrepreneurs, people who have a vision and a message to get out in the world, to make the world a better place, right? right. The world a kinder place. Now I have no facts to back this up, but it, does it seem like since the end of COVID since, yeah, that there are more entrepreneurs in the world today than at any other time in our history? I, I mean, have again, to... I have no facts to back that up. It's just kind of a feeling I have. Uh, I think your feeling is probably correct. Do I have the facts or the data to back that up? No. Would I say I have seen an increase in self-employment? Absolutely, because we're also seeing a reduced rate of, like we're seeing a lot of reduction in employment positions. The games industry, for instance, has been hit hugely by this. When you say games, and you're talking about video games? Yeah, video games industry. A lot of studios are closing. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't know if the two are connected. Probably they are, I would say. Um, people who maybe lost their jobs during COVID said, damn it, I'm tired of working for somebody else. I'm going to work for myself. Yeah. I know I did that, but that was like 2006. Mm -hmm. So well before COVID. But yeah, it, it, so really there is quite a market for you out there yeah i mean there's a there's a market for for a lot of things for sure i mean i have i have my mission where i want to empower more people because empowered people make empowered choices and empower other people and we need more of these people to be in leadership positions and that's why i like targeting entrepreneurs and business owners so that when they do their job, let's say I'm working with a therapist or let's say i'm working with another coach they might not work with business owners but with people who are in employment, well, my work then gets spread in, in ripples, which is, that's the whole point. That's cool. That's kind of like kindness, right? That's exactly like kindness. And we're done. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. So now how does this work with NLP? Neuro Linguistic Programming? Correct. Is that right? Did I get it? I've heard of it. I, I I took a course for for life coaching, and they talked about it heavily, but I never really understood it. Mm. So NLP, neuro linguistic programming, is a modality, a psychological modality uh, based on modern uh, positive psychology that uses a language model to help reprogram and reframe human behavior. So we understand that what we say is 98% subconscious, but also what we say out loud and how we speak to ourselves and how we speak into the world is also how affecting how we behave. So for instance, if we are, and I'm going to go already in a little bit of example territory here. That's fine. If I work best with examples. Fantastic. So if we, for instance, have someone, business owner or, or, or person in general who keeps saying, oh, I'm so stupid, they're not kind to themselves. Let's keep it really in the norm with your podcast. They're not kind to themselves. And they're saying like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh, I'm so mm -hmm. stupid, right? I think we can all agree that at one point or another, we've been that person or we've seen someone or we know someone who's done this, right? Absolutely. Now, you might think, oh, it's not a big deal. You might think it's not a big deal to say this, but let's say, for instance, you have someone who tries to get a new position in a job or who tries to get a new relationship 
um, and tries to go out in the dating world and God knows it's hard these days with internet dating. Like I wouldn't want to be out in the dating. Field. I'm so, yeah, don't, right? don't, no desire to be there again. Right. So it's, it's, it's harder now than it is because everything's so instant and so accessible and so fast. Um, and then you have someone, and again, this is a very high level example. And then you have someone who is constantly saying, oh, I'm such an idiot for not knowing this. And I should know this, right? Again, you might be like, oh, well, that person is being self-reflective. Hey, everybody, we will be right back with more of my conversation with Adina Kroll right after these words from another fantastic Deluxe Edition Network podcast. Welcome in to Metalhead Journeys. What is Metalhead Journeys? It's exactly how it sounds. It's a journey through the world of metal by a couple of metalheads. Are you thinking of getting into metal? Where do you begin? There's so many different subgenres. What bands are good? What albums are good? We'll provide answers to all of those questions. We'll handle all the research and do all the dirty work by listening to the good, the bad, and the ugly, so you don't have to. Classic albums, new albums, bands no one's ever heard of. Get ready as we'll applaud and criticize with the same passion. This is Metalhead Journeys. Not really. So in NLP, we teach how our behavior and ergo the results that we see around us are affected by the language that we're using with ourselves. And you can tell a lot by a person and how they behave based on how they speak. And NLP okay. helps us reprogram this. This is why it's called neuro-linguistic programming. We're changing the language patterns and we're understanding the, like we're, we're looking at the awareness of where this comes from, right? So that we can reshape and reprogram the language people use. Because just because you hear what a person says doesn't mean you know their internal dialogue. Right. No, true. Yes. Most of us are incredibly harsh to ourselves. Most of us are incredibly horrible even. The way that um, a single person treats themselves, they would never do this to another person. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, no. I, and that's I just... learned behavior. Hmm. I wonder where that originated. Childhood. Because their parents talk to them that way? <sighs> yes and no. Social models, um, think about how society is helping us grow up, right? So we get born into the world and for the we say that the first seven years are the things where most of your behavior is shaped the most right? Okay. It's a, it's a rough figure because your brain is developing. You learn, you're learning speech, right? So the way that you start talking, you start learning speech. Um, you start making sense. You start building memories. So your prefrontal cortex is slowly building, uh, which is the newest part of the brain, the logical part of the brain, right. your limbic system responsible for your memories and for certain parts of your behavior with your hippocampus, right? So you have all of these parts of the brain that is, th that are developing, and right. the first seven years are like the, the ones where you'd get the most. And in traditional families, again, this is why I love human design, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, let's say a child um, starts walking and then keeps falling down. And the parent, and by the way, this is a very arbitrary example. This doesn't this is mean not based on any person not based on any person. It doesn't mean that if you did this once, that this is quote unquote bad, like right. zero judgment, no shame, no guilt. Okay. But I'm giving an example, but let's say the child starts walking and uh, is prone. And I was that child, by the way, I trip on flat surfaces still. <laughs> right. So right, there with you. right. And let's say for instance, every time you then trip, your parents just like, Oh my God, you're so silly. You're so silly. Why did you keep doing that? Oh, you're, you're so, so silly. Clumsy. Right? You're so clumsy. Oh, watch out. Be better. Right? Something like that. Or maybe something in the future is just like if we're taking gender roles, for instance. Traditionally, women are brought up to be humble, to be uh, self-sacrificing, to always put other people first. Men traditionally in the sociological are same coin, other side. Right. Aggressive. Yeah. right not aggressive but leadership right right but assertiveness for a man is leadership assertiveness for a woman is being bossy and naggy 
that doesn't mean that it's true, but that's often what is taught. Right. right? Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And so that's what I mean. It starts with childhood because everyone is using their language pattern and humans are wonderful creatures because each and every one of us have a unique experience. If you put a hundred people in the room and let them watch the same movie, everyone has like, everyone has the same popcorn. Everyone has the same drink. Everyone has the same seat size. Everyone's watching the, everyone has the same bloody angle, right? Yeah. No one would have the same experience of the movie. Yeah. That's really cool. And and so basically when we're talking about NLP, we're talking about rewiring our own brains. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. Which I find utterly fascinating. I don't understand it, but I'm fascinated by it. That's awesome. Uh it's called neuroplasticity. It's really cool. Yeah, our brains are amazing things, are they not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when when somebody comes to you and says, I, I want to be successful in whatever it is that I do, what walk me through the steps. How does how do you get started with somebody like that? Mm. The first thing that we need to understand is what is the actual problem? Yes. Right? So it's so, identifying. Right? Because well, I want more success and I'm not as successful, which to be honest is a great starting point. If you have the awareness that something isn't quote unquote right for you, great. Then you're way ahead of the curve because a lot of people don't even know that they're unhappy or in a situation that's not ideal for them. Right. So a lot of people run their businesses thinking, oh my God, it has to be hard. Money doesn't grow on trees. We're already going into limiting beliefs that I'm getting ahead of myself. So the first thing is we need to identify the problem. How did we get here? Right? What does success even look like for you? Um, A lot of people chase success because they've learned that it looks a certain way. Again, 2.4 kits, white picket fence. Right. right. This is what success is. It fits neatly in this nice little box. Right. And once you start to allow people, this is really a permission piece. Once you start allowing them to consider their success, this is a, this is a big amount of work. Once you start allowing them that success can look a certain way. I'm so sorry. I hope that didn't come out. I was going to ignore it. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't because they kept knocking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that the cat? No, it's the postman. Oh. Um, so once you start to see that success can look a certain way, mm-hmm. we already get into NLP territory, right? Oh, but I thought like I was working towards the white picket fence and the 2.4 kids my entire life but it's actually not what I want. Now, what does that mean about me? Right? So it's really important to start understanding. A lot of people need that permission piece, permission piece, because they've worked towards something I've learned. And I, I did this too. I luckily I've been very, very fortunate to be a little bit rebellious from a very early age on. So when I, when I finished school, I didn't like, I didn't want to study, but that was what was expected of me because parents grew up in the east of germany both of them grew up in the communist part before the gdr oh boy the wall came down and so they were just like education like you don't have to like your job you just have to make a lot of money right and so in order to make a lot of money you have to study and so it has nothing to do with it right but the thing is that was their version of success their success was make a lot of money be a lawyer a doctor a policewoman anything along like anything that has authority and you're good you have to like it right and i was very lucky enough to be like (laughs) no thanks (laughs) I'm not going to go into debt for something that I don't even know if I'm enjoying yet. Um, Yeah. And so. Yeah, go ahead. Right. But a lot of people that I grew up with, they continued with this because they were under the impression that it had to be this way. And so when I'm working with people, again, the identity, the, the, the awareness has to come from the permission piece of, am I even allowed to say what is successful for me? Because what if my success is living in a hut in the sticks off grid 
and growing my own vegetables. Like what if my success isn't money, but what if I grow up in a family that is money centric, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's hard to break away from that. It is hard to break away from that. And that's probably one of the biggest pieces in the beginning that I take them through when I come, when, when someone comes to me and says, something's not right. I don't like this. I'm not seeing the success that I want. We always need to assess what is, what is the end goal here? That's yeah. the first thing. The actual work, then the steps that I take them through of, okay, well, how do we get them from A to Z? Well, again, we need to know what we're working towards. It's it, it If they don't know where they want to go, what success looks like for them, and many don't. Many sure. really don't. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I totally believe that. Right. Because, so, you know, what does success look like to you? What What would you be doing that you considered yourself a success? I, I would bet there are tons of people who are hard pressed to even put that into words. You'd be correct. That's exactly the problem because they've never allowed themselves to express themselves. Because this is when we go into NLP territory, right, with identity, work and belief. Because now we start seeing how our behavior is shaped by the personal narratives, the language we use for ourselves, right? So if we then have someone who uh, grew up in a family that was very um, a personality, right? They were very ambitious. They they were just like, my kid needs to be doing these things, always needs to be busy, right? You cannot be right. able to do all of these things. You need to be the top of class, all of these things. And then all of a sudden, you've got a person who keeps chasing, quote unquote, being the best. And now you have someone who seeks perfectionism and everything. And unless they're the best at everything, they don't feel they're good enough. And wow. so now start talking with someone about what does success looks like for you? Well, I need to be the best speaker. I need to win an yeah. award with these things. Okay, well, what happens if you don't? Well, then I'm not good enough. Okay, well, that's a sh shit. Sorry, how swearing? No, that's fine. Go for it. That's a shit thing to say. <laughs> That's a shit existence, right? It's just yes. like, unless I get this thing, I am not good enough. Right. Yeah. I. It, so as I'm hoping that didn't get picked up. My dog's out on the deck barking at something. And, and doing what you do, how satisfying is it when somebody comes back have you ever had that somebody come back five years later or what have you and and goes i'm living my own dream i'm how satisfying is that immensely yeah it's, it's what i live for it's uh that's my cocaine essentially <laughs> <laughs> there are worse things but that's not something like you can go down on the street corner and buy you have to you got to put in the work for that and yeah. that's that's the coolest thing ever. Also, on completely off topic, as a history file, I'm now understanding that there are people in this world who never knew that Germany was two different countries for the longest time. <laughs> that blows my mind. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of things we don't know about. I don't know how German history gets taught in other countries, but obviously, you know, being German, I'm very aware of my history. Right? Right? Oh, yeah, because I... Well, my middle child... No, my, my youngest child was born in 94, so it was after reunification. They may never... I, I don't know if they taught that there were two Germanys. Yeah, it's a thing. I don't know. It's kind of like a, it's a history thing. I love history. So good. Uh, those who don't learn from it. Anyway, I don't know who said that. This is so fascinating. And I so appreciate the experience that you have and what you do. I, if I was still young, and starting out, I would definitely seek you out to help me. I'm beyond help at this point. Okay. So, may I? Oh, please. May I just I? set that up for you. <laughs> you did. Did you notice what you were just doing? Yeah. 
the self-deprecating talk. I'm beyond help. I'm beyond help. I'm too old for help. Right? I'm too old for help. Now, would you ever say that to someone else? No. Right? Because why not? Why wouldn't you say this to someone else? Well, because it's not very kind, first of all. And I mean, hello, my brand, right? That was kind of the point I was trying to make, right? So why is it that we have to do, like, why do we feel the need to do this? I'm obviously not going to NLP you right now, but I wanted to- Oh, thank God. (laughs) Because- No, but I wanted to point it out because it's this exact thing. It's these things that we don't even notice. They're on autopilot. It's just like, oh, I'm beyond help. Everyone does it. Oh, sure. Right? But what if you're not beyond help? What would it look like if you're not beyond help? That's when you drag out the old grandma. Moses didn't start painting until she was in her 80s. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) right so So then i think it just begs really interesting questions because again your podcast is themed around these things like if we want to see a kinder world it always starts with us nailed it yes can we really be kind if we're not kind to ourselves that's a very good question and i think the answer of course is no we can't be kind if we're not kind to ourselves first So, folks, take better care of yourselves. Stop telling yourself that you're too old, too young, too fat, too skinny, too whatever Mm -hmm. to really go after your dreams. Exactly. Because, like, what? Do you not deserve fulfillment anymore if you're past a certain age? Do you not deserve joy anymore if you're, I don't know, if, if your skin doesn't age the same way as everyone else like that's, what a load of bull, what a load of bull crap honestly. you're not wrong <laughs> right like what are you trying who, to say who, makes those, who makes those rules who, who right. says society oh, you, makes those rules and who's society <gasps> it's me <laughs> uh there was a there was an old cartoon and there was a quote from it we have met the enemy and he is us yeah. Too right. Was it Pogo? I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. But anyway, uh, I appreciate so much you coming on to the show, Adina, and it has been such an amazing time. Thank you for your gift of wisdom and time and energy and laughter and everything you bring to this show. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness, was Adina Kroll not the most delightful person to talk to? (laughs) I I had so much fun talking to her. I I could probably do an hour show with Adina, um, but I I, I absolutely love what she's doing, her coaching and her, her mentoring and her public speaking. It's all just so inspiring and so motivating and uh, I I hope you took something positive from from this chat as well if you want more information on Adina I will have a link to her website in the podcast also you can follow her on Instagram and LinkedIn for sure Um, but yeah just fantastic episode I, I absolutely love talking to Adina But all good things must come to an end, and so it shall be with this particular episode. Um, Make sure to look for us on all of your favorite social media outlets. Uh, We're on Facebook, Instagram, the Tickety Talk, LinkedIn. We're we're everywhere. And you might be able to find us some other places, too. Just start there. Start there, and you can find us. And that will do it for this episode of the Kindness Matters podcast. We will be back again next week with another fantastic episode. But in the meantime, be that person who roots for others, who tells a stranger that they look amazing, and encourages others to believe in themselves and their dreams. You have been listening to the Kindness Matters Podcast. I am your host, Mike Rathbun. Have a fantastic week.